So, how are you, Chef Ming Tan? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for asking. So, today we've got a couple of uh, dishes. These are some of my favorite items to cook, right? And uh, I'm going to try and make them as, uh, as follow along as possible. And uh, please tell me, Sing Yan, if you think I'm going a bit too fast or you see some comments from people saying uh, I'm a little bit quick. So I will try and make this uh, quite smooth. Um, the things I'm going to be cooking, the two items, will be a glutinous rice of lo mai fan, uh, but with the flavors of a sapo fan, which is a clay pot rice. I'm using uh, Chinese liver sausage for that. And I will show you this now. Liver sausage. Now you can use uh, the red sausage or the black sausage, which is yun cheong, which is liver sausage. That I, I like this the most. So this is a dish very close to my heart. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be cooking is a kailan dish. So this is stir fried kailan, but the twist is I'm adding a, a crispy kailan leaf garnish on top of that. Uh, and both dishes are going to be using a whole slew of Li Kum Ki sauces from oyster sauce to dark soy sauce to light soy sauce uh, and I believe this underpins uh, the quality of the dish if your sauces, uh, your sauce bases put it that way are not tasty then you're gonna have a problem making the end dish tasty lah, uh, in, in simple terms right Singyan any questions so far? I think so far so good so if you're watching from YouTube please Feel free to send your questions in the YouTube chat or on the Facebook uh, chat. In those of you who are in the Zoom, right, you sign up for Cook Along. So please don't be shy. Switch on your cameras. We are cooking together. So, you know, Chef Ming Tan can see you as well, guide you along. And then we can all take a, you know, good pictures later together. It's a cold cooking, you know, virtual cooking event because we can't be go to a studio to cook together. Uh, given current circumstances. So don't be shy. Switch on your webcam and keep your questions coming. Yeah, happy to answer any questions you guys have. And uh, go ahead and just, just ask me things as I'm doing stuff. Uh, Singyan, I will rely on you to go through some of the questions for me. Ken? Yes. Okay, so the first thing uh, that we're going to go through very quickly is uh, the glutinous rice. Now, the couple of things you do here with the glutinous rice, the first is that we soak it for about two hours. Now, a lot of recipes call for four hours, eight hours, even longer, sometimes overnight. I find that for this recipe, uh, two hours is sufficient. So I've got my glutinous rice here sitting in room temperature water for about two hours. The second thing that you need to do beforehand, uh, if you've read the recipe, is to soak your shiitake mushrooms. Uh, so I use dried shiitake mushrooms. You can find them uh, from all over the place now. Now, once they're dried and they're soaked in sort of lukewarm water for about two hours, the, the, the water right becomes very flavorful with the flavor of mushrooms. This is the water that we're going to use to cook the rice in later, and you don't want to throw that away. So mushrooms nice and soft, soaked. The liquid has all picked up all that mushroom flavor. The last thing you want to do, uh, and this is just a quick 15 minute soak. This is your hamai or your dried shrimp. Uh, and um, uh, this is just to remove a little bit of the excess salt flavor and to soften the hamai so that you can uh, stir fry that later together with your ingredients for the rest of your glutinous rice dish. Great. All right, so what we're going to do here is in a quick uh, sort of hour, we're going to put together the glutinous rice dish, throw that into the steamer, uh, steam that for 20 minutes and then go through a whole bunch of other things as well as finish up the kailan dish and then plate both together and show you how that comes about. Can? Can? All right. Uh, I'm also going to be using this a very bog standard uh, rice cooker. I'm not sure if you can see this here. This rice cooker has absolutely uh, no bells and whistles. It is a very, very basic rice cooker. Um, it's one of my favorite cooking tools of all. This rice cooker is very special to me. Uh, I prefer to use those that have very few functions because I think um, they, they, they suffice for the things that we're using. So I just want to make sure that these recipes that you're going to be cooking with uh, can be done and put together with very simple equipment. All right. The first thing we want to do here is now that our mushrooms have soaked, we're going to pull them out of the water. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do with the mushrooms is we're going to remove some of the woodier stems. Now the stems are edible, but some of them can be a little bit tough and woody. So I'm going to separate that. I should have about six pieces inside this uh, container of water. I think I put one in for extra measure. I've got seven mushrooms in here. Now the total amount of liquid you're looking for later to throw into your into your rice is 300 ml. 
So, don't forget that when you soak the mushrooms in water, they absorb a little bit of water too. And uh, just give yourself a bit of buffer when you're soaking the mushrooms. So I maybe put about 450ml in there, let the mushrooms absorb a bit of that. Uh, I will have to measure out 300ml of water for this recipe. And um, you don't want to exceed that, lah. if not your rice becomes a bit mushy, okay? So I'm just removing the stems from the mushrooms here. And Xinyan, one of the things that I wanted to demonstrate in today's uh, sort of cook along is um, a lot of them stem from basic cooking techniques mm -hmm. and things that you can do at home that, that I find la, are very useful. And the first of this is knife skills. Okay, so you see me using what is called a chef's knife. So this is a standard chef's knife. Okay, and I'm using a relatively large cooking uh, cutting board here. The reason I'm using a large cutting board is I want to have enough space for me to work on uh, and not get crowded so I bump into myself and end up cutting my fingertips. One of the biggest things I find home cooks make the mistake of doing is having very, very small cutting boards. And then all the food is sort of crammed up there and it's falling over the place and making a mess. Get a nice big cutting board, one that's stable and heavy so it doesn't slide around. Mm. Some of those thin ones are very dangerous. I don't like to use those. Okay, so my mushrooms, I've taken the stems off. I'm just going to briefly cut them into strips here. Mm. Chef, how do you hold your knife? Ah, okay. So as I'm cutting my mushrooms, you see me holding my ingredients with my left hand, my non-dominant hand, and my main hand, which is my right hand, I'm pinching the knife blade like this. Okay, so one of the things you never want to do is put your index finger on top of the blade. This makes the blade twist. Don't do that. Pinch the blade with your thumb and index finger, and then use the remaining fingers to grip the handle of the knife. So this way, I control the knife, and the knife doesn't control me. Right. Okay? Second thing you want to do is make sure your fingertips are curled in, so that your knife is always hitting your fingertips and not actually going to cut them off. If you keep your fingers splayed out like that, you will cut them eventually. Hmm. Yeah, we do not want that to happen. <laughs> no, you do not. Okay, mushrooms cut up. I'm going to put this into a bowl here. We're going to stir fry these very briefly, um, together with a little bit of ginger, as well as some of my yun xiong. So ginger, okay, very quick. Quick tip for ginger, when you cut all the knobbly ends off, you can peel them with spoons. Very easy to peel the skin of ginger with spoons, okay? What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to mince this. I've got about a total of 40 grams here. Mm. First thing you do is put the ginger piece down and then cut strips, thin pieces. See all these little thin pieces, right? Yes. And then what you can do is you can stack them together. And then you can flatten them briefly. And what you get here is you can then make strips. So these all look like little match stick pieces here. You see that? Match sticks of ginger. After I make my match sticks and gather them again, align them all, and then just go ahead and cut across them. And then they are basically minced already. I see. Chef, we have a question here. Um, someone is allergic to uh, dry prawns. What substitute do you recommend, if there's any? So dry seafood substitutes for each other very well. Um, if you are allergic to dry prawns, you can use uh, dry scallops, sometimes dried fish too. Uh, although if you are allergic to seafood in general, then it's a bit challenging. La. At that point, I would say just use something like uh, oyster sauce or sesame, uh, oyster sauce or soy sauce or a little bit of salt. Uh, don't overdo it um, with the, the, the replacements, I'd say. So, okay. Uh, uh, pardon me, say that again, sorry. Uh, just, do you have a preference between young and old ginger? Ah, yes, I do. I indeed do. So if you have spotted this is not stringy and woody at all. This is young ginger. I prefer to use young ginger for stir frying because I think it gives a brighter, more uh, pungent, sort of uh, clean smelling flavor. 
But when I want to braise things, when I want to have them in soups and stews, or I'm uh, going to cook this for hours and hours, right? Nah, I will use old ginger. Old ginger has a stronger, more robust taste. Okay, so I'm just taking my minced ginger and putting that into a little bowl here. I hope uh, those of you are cooking along, you are following well. If you have any questions, feel free. Yes, please ask if you have any questions, all right? Right, ginger, minced. Okay, next, time to play with my favorite stuff of all. This is my Yun Xiong. So any of these sausages will do, whether it's black or red sausage. Um, I like the red sausage uh, because it's quite sweet, but I like the black sausage even more because it is uh, so full of that liver flavor. This is goose liver sausage. You can get duck liver sausage, you can get pork liver sausage also. And um, if you have someone uh, from overseas who is able to obtain some of these items for you, treat them very well and then they will occasionally send you some tasty gifts. <laughs> That's a good tip. All right. Singyan, are you, Singyan, are you, uh, are you Cantonese? Uh? No, I'm not. I'm Shanghainese. You're Shanghainese. Okay, so the Shanghainese have the equivalent of of uh, la ro uh, in this sort of sort of uh, in in this sort of Cantonese style. Hmm. I think we definitely uh, the Cantonese are, are the ones that's really good at all the la wei, but mm, uh, mm, mm, mm. a bit uh, uh, like uh, special for Shanghainese because we love our dark soy sauce. So there's oh, a, you love your dark soy sauce. Yes, everything is dark and shiny in Shanghainese cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> dark and shiny. Okay, uh, real quick, I'm just trimming some of the ends that you don't want that are tied up. And then I'm just rough chopping this. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to rough chop all of it. Uh. I'm going to keep four pieces to steam with the rice later, okay? Chef, the, are, you, uh, are you Cantonese? Uh, I am half Cantonese and half Teochew. Uh, it's just that Cantonese food is so common and and so uh, so popular in Singapore that it's very easy to fall in love with Cantonese food early on. Um, yeah. Okay, so I have some of my diced up sausage here. Yes, I think this dish. Now you can see, uh, with the sausage, right? Chinese sausage, mm -hmm. it's got all sorts of tasty bits in here, as well as that pork fat, which is going to be key and crucial uh, to adding richness to the rice. Mm. Yes, that gives a lot of flavor and a bit of juicy, the aroma as well. Yes, I firmly believe that. Firmly believe that. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very crucial. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and start sautéing some of this right now. Xinyan, are you able to see my pan right now? Is this uh, visible for you? Camera is just... It's a bit... You, you might need to move, is it, the camera? Can we move the camera. Okay, I think you can, can come a bit closer. Yep. Yes. A bit uh, more tilted. More tilted, is it? Yes. Okay. How is it angle good? Hello, Singyan, is this angle good? Zoom me a bit more. Zoom in a bit more. Yeah, can okay, we get can. a bit closer? A bit closer. Uh, I think we can tilt down more, but I don't think we can get any mu much more closer. This is, okay. this is great. This is good? Okay, thank you. Uh, I, have a, I have a lovely assistant helping me move the camera. <laughs> thank you. Uh, she, won't sh she won't show her face because she's shy, but yeah, she's been helping me with uh, the setup today. Right. As my pan heats up on low, I'm just trying to also heat up a little bit of my frying oil because I'm going to be frying some shallots also. I think fried shallots in uh, lo mai fan are essential and very, very important, okay? So as this goes on low, I'm just going to take my yun xiong, my Chinese sausage, throw that in there together with my ginger and let that sweat a bit. When I say sweat, I mean I want some of the fat from the 
sausage to render out, okay? And then after that, coat and start to uh, saute that ginger. So let's let that occur first. You can start from a relatively uh, sort of medium heat. Doesn't have to be too hot. I'm not trying to cook all this sausage just yet, okay? I'm just trying to get it to sweat a little bit. I want a little bit of flavor and the oil to come up. Get the fat, get the ginger juice out of it. Let That's the right, exactly. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add is my mushroom. I'm going to put this at the side. Mm -hmm. And my hamai, my dried prawn. But I'm going to drain the water off. Please, uh, don't go and put the water that you're soaking your dried shrimp into the pan also, okay? <laughs> what would happen if we do so? What would happen, uh, what would happen is you'll probably have to uh, figure out what to do with all the excess moisture. Mm. Um, especially glutinous rice. Uh, less moisture is better for you because you can fix and rectify it. More moisture, not so good. Because you don't know what to do with it after that. Yes, you don't want a porridge. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of that uh, sausage fat. Oh, I can smell that already. Uh, my, my lovely <laughs> camera assistant, Unpei, can you smell that also? Mm -hmm. Are you going to nod the camera for us? Yes, yeah. okay, yeah, she's <laughs> nodding the camera. Thank Very you. good. Okay, see, so I'm sweating this, right? It's getting a little bit nice and, and glistening already. Very good. Let's let that cook down a little bit more. Yeah, it's dry. Like, there's no liquid. Then, exactly. Mushrooms and then dried prawns in. Okay, as my oil heats up, right, the next thing I'm going to do is start to play with my shallots. So shallots, crispy shallots. Why shallots and not other types of uh, uh, onion? Why, why not red onion? Shallots have a different flavor from red onion, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you look in the recipe later, what I'm going to do is I'm going to low cook these on, on heat and sort of deep fry them and then get them crispy and golden brown and then scatter them on top of the of the rice later. To me, this is one of the essentials uh, of Love My Fun. And the store-bought stuff, whilst very convenient, just doesn't cut it for me. It, it, it's magical when you do it yourself. I think it's very important that if you have the time and you want to cook for your family at home, you must be able to make uh, fried shallots on your own. It makes a huge difference. Wow. Yeah, very true. Yeah, just from the toppings will really make like, small details that make a big difference. Mm-hmm. Granted, lah, it's going to take you a little bit of time and it's going to take you fair amounts of effort. But I think if you're cooking for small groups of people and you're cooking from the heart and you want people to enjoy the food, right? Then I think this is uh, well worth the effort. Lah. Mm. Just looking at my sausage a little bit. Excellent. Look at that. It's rendering down now. The ginger is getting nicely toasted in that fat. You can smell that. Okay, very good. I'm happy and pleased with that. Next Goes in hamai water drained out. So, uh, we have a question uh, on YouTube that uh, to check what type of cooking oil is. But I don't think we've added any oil yet, right, Chef? We actually have not added any cooking oil because there is enough oil in the uh, the la way in the in the preserved uh, Chinese sausage. Yes, but. If I do use cooking oil, I tend to use uh, canola. If I'm deep frying stuff and I need it really crispy, uh, I sometimes use peanut oil. Okay? Mm. As this fries a little bit, very nice, mushrooms go in. Okay? okay. Without the liquid, please. Sorry? Without the liquid. Ah, yes, yes. Mushrooms also drained out without the liquid. And don't throw away the liquid yet. Huh? I'm keeping that because I'm going to use it in just a little bit. But first, I need to carry on cutting my shallots. So, Chef, what have you been busy with? What have I been busy with? <laughs> well, I'm sure all of you know that in F&B, there are a couple of busy periods. Uh, the festive period is always very busy for us. So... In terms of um, being busy with December, I think that's basically been the biggest uh, part of my of my year right now. Uh, it's been a strange year, lah, let's put it that way. Hmm. But uh, the fact that we're doing live streaming like this shows that there are different new ways that people can reach out and connect over food. And it's very it's very encouraging that everyone is, uh, is participating in this sort of thing. So uh, just a quick shout out to... To, to your team, Singyan, for organizing this uh, cookathon. 
and for our friends at Lee Kum Ki for helping us with these uh, these uh, products. And um, we're very pleased to be able to do this today with everyone who is at home. And all those there, I haven't heard anyone say anything. Um, seeing if you can encourage everyone at home to go and post something or say hi, turn on their cameras. This is a cook along. This is yeah. not watch me cook. Uh. This is a cook together, okay, everyone. So turn on your cameras and then tell me what you're doing or ask me questions. Um, help us out here. We're very happy to answer anything you want. So don't be shy. Put on your camera, your mic. Um, yeah, this is the time to meet uh, Chef Ming. So any questions, just ask, uh, just shout out. And show us also what you like. Um, yeah, I'm sure we can also, uh, we have things to learn from our home chef as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I want to make this interesting distinction. A lot of people think, oh, professional chef versus home chef. Um, professional chefs are better. This is not always true. Uh. <laughs> there are many, many home chefs that I have learned from and I have experienced. Uh, whether they are relatives of mine or family friends of mine who are excellent home cooks. Some of them, obviously the more senior ones, have cooked and failed more times than I have succeeded. So uh, one of the things that we should always be doing is to never claim that, oh, just because you're a home chef means you're not good. Mm. Home chefs sometimes um, are very, very decent cooks in their own right. Think about it. Uh, you have to plan your meals for a family. You also have to budget, you have to be economical, you have yeah. to prevent wastage also. And every day you have to cook different things. Eh? Restaurants are uh, restaurants uh, have a good life because they, they, they cook the same thing over and over again until they change their menu. So if you have home cooks, uh, you can't cook the same thing over again. Your customers will be angry at you at home if you cook the same thing every day. So Chef, real quick question, how big is your fire now? How big is my fire now? Is it my spirit or the <laughs> fire of my, on the pan? Okay, my fire now is at a sort of low. Okay, I'm just trying to dry out the mushrooms slightly, but I'm very pleased with the way this pan looks. Okay, okay we don't pan want to... one. Yeah. Pan two, where I've got my shallots, right? So this is on a medium heat. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see, okay, my, my, my excellent kitchen helper will show you. Uh, the shallots are just sitting in the oil and bubbling now. This heat is quite low. I don't want to burn them. And this will take about 15 to 25 minutes of slow cooking. Oh, okay, wow. just to pay attention to that. Yeah much time to fry shallots yes okay next thing next thing here next thing is you see all this being cooked right and then this is my rice my rice has been soaking in water for about two hours now yes. i'm going to drain off this water and i'm going to saute the rice in that same pan oh so we are going to actually sen chao, sen chao no mi fan. <laughs> yes 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 and and why why cook the rice uh, beforehand so a lot of cultures uh, will try and impart flavor in the rice beforehand the spanish do it with the paella mm. the italians do it with the risotto yes. what you do when you cook rice is you help to impart more flavor don't forget uh, there's a lot of flavor sitting in this pan already um, a lot of oils a lot of aromatics okay i'm just gonna throw this in glutinous rice been soaked for two hours. Please uh, remember to soak your glutinous rice. If you can't cook it from scratch, uh, I have not had good results, uh, put it that way. Either too hard or too soft, or you need to use too much water. Yes, Chef, okay? quick question for the oil that you use to fry sh shallots. What kind of oil? Is this that? is just canola oil. This is plain oh. canola oil. Okay, now that the, my rice is inside, my rice is moist, right? So I'm going to bump up the heat a little bit. I'm just trying to dry it out slightly, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing this at home, you don't necessarily have to use a frying pan. You can use any sort of uh, heavy bottom pan. But try not to use a thin pan because you might burn things inside, okay? okay. So you can hear the rice starting to sizzle a little bit. That's good. I want to get some of that moisture off. I want the rice to absorb a little bit of that fat. The next thing I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be adding the rest of my seasoning to the rice before I steam this. Uh, what's mm. in my rice? What's in my rice? I've got white pepper, obviously. I've got a little bit of Chinese rice wine. And in this magical bowl, oh, I have now dripped that. <laughs> wow. That, too, excited. That. Too, excited, too excited. Too excited. Too excited. In this magical bowl here, I'm just tilting this for you guys to see, right? So I've got um, 
a mix of uh, a bunch of sauces here. I've got Lee Kum Kee dark soy sauce. I've got Lee Kum Kee's uh, oyster sauce. Uh, mm. Probably my favorite oyster sauce of all. And I've got Lee Kum Kee's uh, light soy sauce. So a combination of these plus a little bit of sesame oil really helps your, your glutinous rice sing. Mm. Um, if you don't have these as a base, uh, you just don't have that umami and that flavor, okay? So don't forget to add these items in. They're crucial, absolutely crucial. Yes. Um, Xinyan, you say you like dark soy sauce, right? I do. Okay, so this dark soy sauce, the Lee Kam Kee one, uh, is proper stuff. It's not too salty. I think a lot of people have the idea that soy sauce is always salty. Mm. Dark soy sauce is actually quite sweet and it's got this caramelized flavor to it. I think that's very important for food like braised pork, you know, your Dong Bo Ro, your mm. Kong Ba. All that is very essential if you use a good, proper dark soy sauce. Yeah, and, and for the uh, soy sauce, right, uh, there's also no preservative added. Mm -hmm. So it's really good uh, uh, quality. And then the oil sauce, also you can definitely use it for uh, like different marination. Yep. Okay, okay. Singa, I just want to show you something real quick, okay? I have just been cooking the rice slightly until it browns and it sort of picks up some of those flavors from Ooh. the... The Yun Xiong, and I think this is a crucial step. Uh, yes, it might take a little bit more time, but I think it's very, very essential. Once you do this, uh, you get this constant brown aromatic flavor. Okay, this is even before I'm steaming it, all right? Mm. So, heat off. I'm going to now combine a bunch of things together with the rice. Wow, we're getting ready to put the rice into the one button rice cooker. <laughs> the the one button rice cooker. Exactly, exactly. So my rice cooker is on. My pot is nice and warm. Okay. I'm going to fill my pot with my rice right now. All this goes in I love eating clay pot rice, but I never knew that we could actually do it at home. Because this is a, like a mix of the glutinous rice and... The it, is, it is a mix. Um, clay pot rice is traditionally always cooked in a clay pot. Uh, but that can be challenging for some people at home and not always easy to clean up, la, I'd say. Uh, so you can get a good mix, half-half of that flavor together with your flavor of glutinous rice at home. Yeah. Okay, so rice uh -huh. into the pot. Okay, the next thing is, remember that mushroom water? Okay, I'm going to measure out. For this amount of rice, I only need 300 grams of this. Okay, pouring from the top, because uh, sometimes there's sediment and sand. I yes, just need 300 yeah. ml of water. Ding. Okay, very good. So, now if you can smell this, I'm going to give this to my kitchen helper to smell. It smells like... Is the water warm? Um, it is not. It is It is just lukewarm when I add it in. Now it's room temperature. Some people say add boiling water. Please don't do this. Uh, yeah. I'm not a fan of adding boiling water to dried mushrooms. I think it kills the flavor. Uh, mm -hmm. Always add lukewarm or even cold water and let it sit for two hours. Okay, so mushroom water goes in. Just going to stir that around a little bit. Okay, next thing. My beautiful mix of dark soy sauce, light soy sauce, oyster sauce, all from Lee Kam Kee, and a little bit of sesame oil for some zing. Okay, I'm going to spoon that in also. Yay, now it's going to change the color. <laughs> it is definitely going to change the color. Sing is very pleased by that. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to hold out the pot just to show you guys, right? It hasn't absorbed it yet, but you can tell already that um, there is a good amount of browning going on. Mm. Okay, next thing, my white pepper. Make sure I get all that in there. Uh, the white pepper, according to the recipe, is about one teaspoon, I believe. Okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, feel free to amend that if you want less or more. Don't forget, in here, I've got my... Uh, Chinese sausage that I cut up very fine and then render it down with the fat. I've got my ginger, I've got my hamai, my dried prawn, as well as my shiitake mushroom that was soaked. The last thing in here is a little bit of Chinese rice wine. Just stir that in to give that a little bit of uh, alcoholic flavor. This alcohol will bubble off later um, and it'll be fine. Okay, so now... This looks kind of watery and soupy, almost like a risotto, right? This is where we go and steam. Okay, I will see you guys later. Steamer's on. Just going to take this, chuck it in there. Okay, press cook and let's go. Wow. 
that will take approximately 20, 25 minutes for my steamer and this recipe. Of course, the more you have inside that, the longer it might take to cook. Um, and you might need to find your own sort of timing of your recipe, but uh, go ahead and just uh, figure it out. Not, not complicated. Uh, this is, like I said, the most simple one button warm or cook rice cooker. And uh, it makes very tasty uh, glutinous rice for me. The last one. thing I'm going to do... Oh, sorry, Singyan. Yes, you are going to say? Yeah. I have one quick question about 100 milliliters of distilled vinegar that's in the recipe. Is it to be used uh, for the rice? Ah, no, no, no. The vinegar... Okay, and let me get my pot. The vinegar, sugar and salt, I have combined in a small pot. Right now, I'm going to be very quickly pickling some of the garlic chives. This is one of my favorite additions to glutinous rice. Glutinous rice can be a little bit of a heavy dish. It's a bit strong. It's a bit uh, umami, right? But garlic chives, actually, once you pickle them, they have a nice flavor. Uh, I was taught this um, by another chef friend of mine called Ron uh, when I ate at his restaurant. And he does a very good version of that. So I'm going to just cut these up into little bits and then boil uh, the vinegar, water, salt, and sugar. Make a very quick pickling liquid. And then after that, uh, throw the garlic chives in there for about uh, five minutes. What this does is it will semi-cook them and the flavors will get nice and bright. It'll be like pickled garlic chives. Wow, sounds super interesting. Can't wait. It's, it, it's actually very simple. So one of the things that people always assume is pickling something is very complicated. It's not. You just need a little bit of acid, a little bit of sugar, salt, and any other aromatics. Today, we're just using straight up sugar, salt, and vinegar, and a bit of water. But you can throw almost anything inside. Mustard seeds, bay leaf, five spice, star anise, cinnamon, really up to you. Uh, just doing a quick check on my shallots here. My shallots are cooking down. They are very, very, very pale golden. Not quite done yet. Um, you know the shallots are done when there are less bubbles. Mm -hmm. That's the water coming out and they start to get a little bit crispy. Right now, they're still a bit limbic and soft. So, nope, not done yet. Remember, I want these crispy and caramelized. Okay, just to get you guys uh, up to speed, whenever I deep fry anything, I always make sure I have a strainer ready with a bowl or a plate so I can take this out immediately and then sit this in so it doesn't drip anywhere. Right, one of the things that I think uh, is trained in us in, in, in kitchens, professional kitchens, is we constantly always think about the next two, three steps ahead so that we have all our plates and preparation and utensils all ready for us before we even begin cooking. Right, very organized. Thanks, Chef. Yes. Okay, now we can go into some of the prep for our Kailan dish. Okay, mm -hmm. Kailan dish. Uh, before that, I'm just going to get my pickling liquid Organized real quick. Let me just turn on the stove there. Do we have any questions from any of our viewers right now? Anyone watching? Any questions of the process so far? Anyone wants to ask me a question? If you ask me a question, maybe I might be nice and, and either send you a recipe or cook with you <laughs> sometime. Yeah, maybe we can entice people to talk to me. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I'm, I'm not going to bite. I'm, I'm not a scary person. Ask us a question, please. Anyone, Sinyan? Yeah, Anyone question. looks like they want to ask us a question? I have a question about the shallot. So it was like, like very, like really like 15 to 20 minutes. It's like, yeah, we were quite surprised it's that long, the shallots take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're cooking it on low heat, you're trying to sweeten it. Uh, you're not trying to cook the shallots so they're cooked. You're trying to cook the shallots so that they're crispy and brown. Now, the, the key thing here is when you want crispy shallots, you want them to be sweet and caramelized and imparting a nice flavor without being burnt. So you must cook them low and slow. It is like roasting something in the oven to get this beautiful golden color. So shallots need to be cooked very, very gently. And you need to keep watching them and babying them so that at the point where the sugars inside the shallots get nice and sweet and and, and that caramelized flavor is there, then you take them out and you cool them already. There is a very thin line between that flavor and then burnt. Shallots burn quite easily. So you don't want to get to that burn stage. Yes, you don't want so we have a question here. How about using the traditional wok steaming method uh, instead of using the rice cooker? How long would that take? Uh, if you steam, it should take approximately 15 minutes. Or I'll say it's about three quarters of the time versus uh, a, a normal rice cooker. Um, one of the things I want to, to mention here is that uh, 
you you have to be careful with um, um, steaming stuff. Uh, often, what happens is uh, if your wok is too big, or you know your size of your steamer is there. Um, I see a lot of people have too much water, and the water goes into the steaming tray, and that sometimes causes a couple of accidents. But if you have a wok and you have the space for it, go ahead and steam your glutinous rice. Mm. Make sure you have either a cloth or a steaming tray. And that helps to cook your glutinous rice quite fast. Lah. It's definitely faster than if you use a rice cooker. Yeah. And Chef, I think we have more questions coming in. Uh, if sure. you have Chinese sausage, is there any replacement? If you don't have Chinese sausage, is there any replacement? Ah? Wow, a bit tough. Ah. Without Chinese sausage... Uh, <laughs> um, eh, okay, maybe you can use chicken, but you'd have to marinate that and make sure it's quite sweet. Uh, Chinese sausage has a very specific flavor. Um, and if there are any friends out there who don't take uh, pork, there are sausages that use chicken also, and you can use them as well. The flavor is quite similar. And then for the rice, what type of rice do we use? Is it okay to use normal everyday rice, like non glutinous rice? Uh, n n very different flavor. Um, glutinous rice is widely available, and this is a glutinous rice dish ultimately. So, uh, best if you use glutinous rice, lah, I would say. Yes. And uh, another question is how much wine and oyster sauce are added to the glutinous rice? How much wine and oyster sauce? Well, for this recipe, I've used the appropriate amount. You can go and check out the recipe that's been posted uh, together with this uh, Cooker Thorn. Yes. Uh, class um, and uh, I believe Senior has made that recipe available. Off the top of my head, you only want to add enough so that there is a bit of the flavor at the back. You don't want it to be prominent. Uh, you're talking about a couple of tablespoons. Uh. And right. of course, depending on the amount you're cooking, if you multiply the recipe, just follow the amount. Yes, so the, yeah, please just open your app. Yeah, go to the Cookathon section and you can find the exact amount. Yay! So we have quite a few questions now. Chef Me is chopping the chives. Is it? The garlic yes, chives. these are garlic, uh, garlic shoots actually. What do we see? Um, uh, um, what are the garlic shoots? Ah, uh? Um, and uh, you can see the heads. Uh, maybe I. Uh, the heads are somewhere else really. Yeah, the heads just before they, they sprout uh, and flower. So garlic chives are actually not like spring onions or, or jiu cai in that they are not um, mm. thin. They are actually quite firm. And that's why you actually have to cook them a little bit. So my picking liquid is on the boil now. I'm just going to throw them inside there very, very quickly. Shoot. And then here's the best part. I don't want this to get too soft. I'm not trying to cook them all the way down. I turn yep. off the heat. Yep. All right. Okay. I'm just going to leave them to sit in there just for a quick minute. Wow. And I'm looking at my shallots. Okay. Those are browning nicely, gently going. How is my glutinous rice coming along? It is steaming up furiously. Very good. Ah, okay. So thank you very much uh, to our wonderful kitchen uh, assistants. We have a big bundle of uh garlic shoots here can you see garlic shoots yeah, yeah, you guys know what this is like you can see the the heads they're about to flower here yeah. right can yes it's a nice it's a nice well, question mark yeah okay it's, it's a, it we feel like not so much used outside but it's really good for home cooking um, uh no i mean I, i've had it quite often in restaurant dishes also mm -hmm. uh, i wouldn't say that this is just for home cooking it is uh, widely available and quite common. I think people quite quite enjoy this garlic chai flavor. So just let us sit inside for a couple more minutes just to boiling. remove some of that crunchy itch. Uh, not boiling anymore. Uh, you okay. can see I turn off the heat, right? So I'm just going to leave it to sit there. Okay, they're okay. floating. Away. They are They are floating. They are definitely floating. Just taking a look at my rice. Where is my spatula? My rice. It is in here. Okay, so I've got two things cooking already. The last thing I'm going to be putting together is my vegetable dish. And um, I need to have my shallots out before I fry the crispy kailan leaf. Uh, I will show you how we cook the kailan leaf later. Uh, that's going to be a lot of knife work. Okay, but just taking a look at my... Oh, that steam. Okay, just going to 
stir this around briefly, gently. It's only been about seven or eight minutes. I just want to make sure it doesn't stick. Mm, okay, yeah. We want to check in on the rice, make sure they don't, don't stick. Forget there is a amount. Yeah. So this is glutinous rice, right? Unlike normal white rice, jasmine rice or basmati rice, those are you can't keep stirring because if you stir halfway and you're going to fluff it up, it will break. Okay. But glutinous yeah. rice is different. Glutinous rice is strong enough to actually uh, be handled a little bit. Oh, that smells really good. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Okay, at this point, at this point, the remaining sausage that I have, I'm just going to layer on the top and let that steam together with the rice. Some of that oil will fall into the rice too, and then I can cut the sausage later when the rice is done. Oh okay? Cover back on. Very simple. I'm gonna take out my garlic chives now. They have been cooked. Yay. Well, cooked la, just briefly. We have a question. Will the rice cooker be oily or difficult to clean after we cook the rice? Uh, it will be oily, definitely, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's difficult to clean. I can show you guys what it looks like later. Um, even if there's residue and rice that's stuck to the outside, uh, pouring in some boiling water and letting it sit overnight, it usually loosens it very well for me. Mm. Uh, I tend to use um, rice cooker pots that don't have non-stick coatings, so they're not non-stick. Uh, but if you use a non-stick coating, it should come off very easily, actually. So here's the cool thing about pickling. Once you've pickled your items, you can then uh, reuse the pickling liquid for something else. If mm -hmm. you need to pickle more vegetables or you want to pickle chili, pickle green chilies or red chilies. Uh, if you want to pickle some uh, uh, cucumbers and vegetables for some of your lem lempan, uh, mm -hmm. that, that works also. Uh, this liquid can be kept um, room temperature or in the fridge up to you. So... Very quick pickling. I'm just going to try one of these. It's got a sweet and sour zing to it. And then it's still got that the garlicky flavor. Sounds very crunchy. Um, that. It's not super crunchy. It's not like raw crunchy. Hmm. But it is still sort of half cooked, which is great. Uh, because I'm going to sear this in a pan very quickly later if we have a bit of time. Give it a bit of color. Okay, removing our pickling liquid off to the side. I'm just checking on our shallots again. See, you really want to baby this shallot stuff. <laughs> I can see you like checking numerous times on the shallot. Yeah, I, I, it's this is this is the fun part of low and slow cooking, especially at home. You know, if you're going to take care of other stuff and deal with other things, you know, just make sure you always have this invisible timer in your head. Every couple of minutes, come back, take a look. Okay, yeah. register that this is the color that you're looking for. It's not going to be cooked yet. I think one of the things that uh. Uh, cooks who are not so familiar in the kitchen if you're new to cooking um, need to learn as a skill is you need to be able to understand what you're looking at if this still has bubbles and still feels very soft uh, then I know that I can go back and do something else and come back in 5-10 minutes it won't be completely done but if it's quite brown and it's quite hard and there are no bubbles coming off it means a lot of the water is out and this is in danger of burning very soon then you have to stand there and watch it so these visual cues are very important, okay? Yes. And right. Uh, Do we have I another question? To, yeah, cook the kailan now. Yes, okay. So the kailan. I have two types of kailan with me. I've got your small kailan, your baby kailan, as well as the more traditional kailan leaf, the big kailan leaves. Yes. Okay? And I think they both have their uses. For the kailan that is stir-fried, you want to eat the stems. Now, kailan that uh, I'm going to use as a garnish, you want to use the big leaves. And I'm going to show you what to do here. Just now, I use a big knife, right? I'm going to put this aside, and I'm going to use a paring knife, a sharp paring knife. Now, every kailan leaf has a spine on the center. I'm going to be deep frying this. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be removing the spine real quick. I only want the leaves. Okay? Why am I doing this? Because I want to deep fry this kailan leaf as a garnish for my kailan vegetable dish. Wow. Okay. Um, I've, I've had this most commonly in uh, Teochew restaurants. Uh, Cantonese restaurants, for some reason, I've heard about it, but I haven't, I haven't had that so often. 
and you can obtain these large kailan leaves uh, and they're usually cheaper than the small kailan um, because they don't look so pristine but that's perfectly fine because after all you're using these as a garnish okay it's a really good way to impress your friends and family by uh, deep frying a crispy garnish to go together with uh, some of your fresh vegetables definitely so. mm -hmm. and one of the questions that i always find people like to ask especially to do with vegetables at home is how do i cook vegetables like they cook in restaurants i don't have a wok fire or if i have a wok it's not as hot so how do i get that same sort of crispy flavor now all that depends on some of the cooking utensils you have at home yes. uh Yen, what kind of cooking uh frying pan do you have in your house oh my god <laughs> i have a non-stick <laughs> pan and i have a kind of a cast iron like wok but that's it okay uh non-stick is fine how thick is your non-stick pan not thick <laughs> okay so one of the things I always tell people, one of the basic things that's most important with cooking at home and getting better results is use decent equipment. I didn't say use expensive equipment, I said use decent equipment. One of my favorite items to use in a kitchen is a heavy bottom non-stick frying pan. These are not mm. expensive. I'm going to show you the back of this pan very briefly, very quickly, and then I'll flip it again. Because there, <laughs> there is a logo there, uh, but I'm not going to say much. Uh, um, I have in other videos previously also mentioned that I think the cookware from this brand is very, very decent at a very affordable price. Uh, and I've always enjoyed working with their products um, on a personal capacity because I think they're very efficient. And you can just find very good non-stick cookware that's heavy bottom. Why heavy bottomed? You hear this, huh? Okay, that heavy bottom bit retains heat. So it transfers the heat to your vegetables very well. With a thin pan, what you get instead is thin sheets of metal that don't transfer the heat to your vegetables and then they lose the heat very quickly. Mm. So later you'll see that if I crank this pan all the way up and I fry my vegetables inside, I will get that crunchy texture just like a wok. Oh, okay. okay. How long checking. do I steam the sausage for? How long do I steam the sausage for? Uh, there is no hard and fast rule here. I am simply just trying to cook this uh, and get this to uh, a done sort of yeah. texture. As long as when the, I guess, together with rice, right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay, rice is about halfway there already. Let's continue to let that cook. Mmm, nice and tasty. Again, checking out my shallots. Ooh, now you can see. There is a gentle brown color. Come, come, come closer. It's getting gently brown and they're not flopping over so much. I can actually pick them up. They are starting to get crispy. They are starting to lose the water content inside. Mm. See, now I can pick them up like that. Yes. Okay. Monitor the next batch very quickly. All right. Before we get to cooking the final items, I'm going to cut my kailan vegetables. Mm. How are you okay. going to cut them? Sure. How am I going to cut my kailan vegetables? This is the big kailan leaf, not the small one. Hmm. Okay, This is for deep frying. This is commonly known as a chiffonade. And I have done this several times because I really like the textures and flavors of kailan leaves when they're deep fried. It's hmm. got this almost like kale, seaweedy flavor. <laughs> okay, first of all, I layer the leaves flat down yes. in a bundle, okay? So let's start with maybe about 10, 12. <clears throat> 10 or 12 leaves. I roll these leaves up. Wow. In a tight bundle like that. Yes. So it looks like a spring roll. Okay? And see, this is why you need a large enough board, right? I've got big leaves here, a big knife going. Yes. Okay? Make sure you always have space. Next, what I do here is I rock my knife and try and make these thin ribbons of kailan. And because I rolled the bundle very tight, right, each cut I'm making gives me shreds that are very fine and very long. This is commonly known as a chiffonade. Now, if you look at this, when I open this up, 
suddenly you have this wonderful mess. Looks like a uh, green rubber bands. Like Yushin, like Lohei. <laughs> yes, almost like Lohei. Okay. So I'm just going to demonstrate that one more time. I'm going to put this aside. It looks beautiful. Mm, actually, very simple technique. Just need to make sure your knife is sharp. Mm. Okay. Once again, remember, make sure your board has uh, enough space and your knife is sharp and your board isn't moving around too much. So Ming has uh, moved the stem of this large kailang leaves beforehand and now he's demonstrating the chiffonade method to slice them. That's right, to get thin ribbons out of that. So see, press them down and then roll them into a tight spring roll-like bundle. Nice. Okay, cut away the top and then very carefully Cutting thin strips across, like that. It's quite a soothing to watch. <laughs> it is very soothing to do also. <laughs> I enjoy this sort of thing. Right, now, just loosen this bundle up. And poof! Very nice. Vegetables, looking good. Okay, I'm smelling something now. I'm smelling caramelized shallots. Oh dear goodness, look at this. You can smell it. You can smell it almost instantly when it starts to get to that that level, that flavor. Look at that. Okay, this like is golden. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna take them slightly further. Make sure I stir them properly. And then once I remove all these shallots out of the oil, I can put my kaitan leaf inside as my garnish. Okay. And then we're gonna very quickly gonna fry up the remainder of the kaitan, and then we're gonna make a quick sauce and show you how that all comes together. So we're about there already, guys. We're about there. Just making sure. How is my rice doing? My rice is looking good. Mm. Just when you tasted um, the rice, how was it? Nice, very flavorful. Uh, and uh, just needing maybe about another 10 minutes of uh, steaming inside the rice cooker. Okay. Personally, I'm done. Ooh. Ouch. Oh. Sorry, because I'm wearing a headset. Okay, so I'm happy with these shallots. I think they are they are cooked enough now. So I'm just going to remove them from the oil. I don't see any more bubbles. That's a thing. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell. But I don't see any more bubbles, which means there's no more water inside these shallots uh, to turn into steam. right? Which indicates to me that they're done and time to come out. Okay. This is really good. like just one, yeah, one scoop, everything's out. Uh, maybe a little bit of stuff in there, but don't worry, I can get that out later. Okay, maybe the other stuff comes out. Some of us might be like taking power in your plate, like you know. <laughs> Sorry. Some of us like to put kitchen towel on the plate and get deep fried stuff from it. What's your you, thought? You you can you can do that. Uh, to, to absorb some of that oil. Um, personally, I like the flavor of the, the crispy shallot oil. Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this real quick, right? Wow. Can you hear that? Can you hear yeah. that? That's crispy. And you see, this is very different from the commercially bought fried shallot. It's very, very different in texture, definitely different in flavor. Mm. Okay, this is well worth the effort to put onto your glutinous rice. Okay, very quickly, I'm going to set that aside. Should okay. I use the oil here for something else, the shallow oil? Please. Yes, I'm keeping that for my kailan. Ooh. My crispy kailan. But before we carry on with that, just going to clear out the board real quick and then we're going to get into our final dish, which is the vegetables, okay, the kailan. Mm. Okay, so prepping the vegetables. Very simple. There's not much to do here. I'm just going to be prepping a little bit of vegetable and a little bit of garlic. Right. Mm. So, what do you normally do when you have garlic with your vegetables? You tend to mince this garlic, right? Personally, I don't like doing that. I like to slice my garlic when it comes to cooking vegetables with garlic, okay? Especially for stir fries. So, real quick, just peel my garlic. 
and I'm going to be actually frying some oil with this garlic first, and then after that, reserving the oil and taking the garlic out. Now, a lot of people, they just cut the garlic roughly chopped, and after they throw it in, they just stir fry everything. I sometimes find that a lot of the garlic is not cooked properly, uh, and it's a bit raw. Uh, raw garlic inside food, eh, yeah. not my favorite thing. Yeah. A bit too pungent, right? Yes. Wow, I can smell that. I can smell my glutinous rice almost there already. I can smell uh, the sausage is calling out to me. Okay, I'll just give it a bit of a wipe. I wanna, yeah, I want to slice the garlic and mm -hmm. then... Yep, just going to slice this garlic real quick. Doing? For those who are cooking alone, do we have any? How are you cooking at home? <laughs> I hope and I hope people cooking at home uh, can follow and are enjoying the process also. Okay, garlic has been sliced. Right, this is where. I heat my pan up again gently. Mm -hmm. uh, at what flame, chef? Uh, I'm going to put this on a medium heat again. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to give this a little bit of oil. So remember, I want some of the garlic oil. I want that garlic flavor, okay? So as the oil heats up, garlic slices go into the pan. You want to put a bit more oil, right? Not just to cook the garlic, but you want to use the oil. I do want to use the oil, that's right. So anyone cooking out there, anyone cooking and following us, any problems with your dishes so far? How are you enjoying this session? Hi, Bian. Thanks for switching on the camera. Are you cooking with us? Hello. Hi. Sorry, what is your name again? Bian, is it? Yeah, hi, I'm Bina here. Yeah, hi, Bina. I, hi, Bina. I tried I tried to cook, but I couldn't get in on time. But it's okay. I'm I'm salivating as I'm watching you. Oh, <laughs> nice to meet you, Bina. Thank you for for joining us. Uh, do you have any questions with our process today so far? No, I'm just dying to try it out afterwards. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you for your participation. We appreciate it. So at this point right now, you see I'm tilting the pan, right? Hmm. I'm just trying to make sure that my garlic slices are sitting in my oil, and my oil is being perfumed by that. Okay, now because I cut the garlic so thin, it will start to brown and crisp up quite quickly. So you need to watch this. You can't just like go off and do something else. By the time you come back, should burn. Right? You have to sit here and watch this a little bit. Now that this is cooking, I can sort of move it around and make sure it's at the kind of color that I want it. Then I will take this out, strain it, and then I'll leave the oil in the pan and then fry the vegetables in that. See. So Chef Ming, if you're going to cook like a family meal, like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, like San Tai Yi Tang, right? Mm. What what would be your uh, be the dishes that you want? San Tai Yi Tang? Ah. Mm. Uh, I think one of the things I I I I, I really like is uh, Cantonese soups, mm -hmm. uh, especially those that are full of like uh, watercress and pork ribs. I think that together with a bit of rice makes for a very satisfying, simple meal mm. uh, by itself. Mm. Um, of course, some classic Teochew dishes. I like steamed fish, uh, and I also like a good, uh, a good kuei tiao or ho fan, you know. So oh. those would be my, my picks. Actually, even now that you got me started, uh, Xing Yun, uh, I even like things like uh, a good sweet and sour pork with some good white rice, you know, well cooked. Jasmine rice. I think that's one of the mm. pleasures of uh, Chinese food as well. Okay, 
So. Oh, Chef, we have a question. What kind of spatula are you using to fry the vegetable? It looks like those for fried oyster. <laughs> uh uh fried oyster um what kind of i'm not sure what a spatula that looks that's meant to fry oysters is <laughs> this is just a standard uh silicon spatula oh. i just bought one with a stainless steel handle because i think it's a little bit more durable and i prefer that all right so i've separated my garlic slices from the oil nice golden brown i don't want it to cook any further this should go directly onto the vegetables once they're done I just make sure that this is all out here and my garlic oil is still available for me to use you see yes okay right i'm gonna keep the heat on medium here because okay. i'm gonna start to saute my vegetables inside so what do i have here i have some kailan and sometimes you will see like longer pieces like that very easy just take this all and cut it in half okay I need a little bit more than that. Both the stem and the leaves in this. Yes, that's right. Both the stem and the leaves. And these are quite young, uh, this kailan. So mm -hmm. it can actually take uh, the stems and not have to peel them. Sometimes the kailan is a little bit thicker and woodier. That's when you really have to watch uh, and then peel the stem sometimes. Yeah. All right. How do you know the oil is hot when it shimmers and it moves around the pan like this? Okay. This oil is very loose and runny and very not viscous at this point. So that's great. I know it's hot. I'm going to take my vegetables and throw them in. You're going to watch it. Just go shh. Okay. You need to have that sm that sound. If your pan is too thin, you're not going to have that sound. All right. Ready? Yeah. Uh? Hear this. Uh? One, two, three. You hear that? Ooh. That's how you know your pan is hot enough. And you got to have that. Okay. So don't do anything. Don't cover it. Some people like to cover it and use the steam. But then you don't get the flavors there. Just don't cover it. Leave it to go. And let the vegetables soften a little bit. Very don't nice. forget this is garlic oil already, yeah? So there's some flavor there. Okay? Give it a bit of a toss. Let them wilt slightly. And at this point, right, you, because it's splattering and stuff, everyone's like, oh, reduce the fire, reduce the heat. No, don't do that, okay? Yeah. Keep it at medium. Keep it high. So that you can continue to saute your vegetables. Okay. Uh, don't be afraid of getting the vegetables burnt. Yeah. There's plenty of vegetables. There's water in the vegetables. They won't burn so much. Okay. Mm. It'll be okay. We have a question here about uh, actually cooking the garlic slice in cold oil. Uh, that when the garlic slices are, cold, are cooked in cold oil, the garlic will infuse the oil. Have you tried uh, you can, you can do that. Um, I don't find that it's necessary. I think in, in hot oil, uh, the garlic flavor is there as well. Are you trying to retain the oil and use it for something else to drizzle into your food? Then yes, in that sense, you can uh, uh, cool the oil after that. Sorry, am I answering your question? I hope I am. Okay, you hear that popping and that snapping, right? That's good. That's the kind of sound you want to hear. Keep the heat high, okay? Yes. All right. Next thing I'm preparing for my sauces here. Preparing for my sauces. So I have my cornstarch and water. Yes. So make sure you stir that with a spoon or your finger. Get that all nice and mixed up. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is ready to go in. Then I have a little bit of sugar, a little bit of white pepper, as well as a little bit of water and a little bit of Again, oyster sauce, dark soy sauce, all from Lee Kam Ki. These are flavors that you cannot do without when you are making a good sauteed vegetable dish. Wow. Okay, keep this jumping in the pan. The heat is up now. That's very good. I think my vegetables are almost done in a little bit. So this is where I add some of that water. Okay. That's just water. That's just water. Don't add the water so soon, okay? Add the water only after your vegetables are about cooked. Okay, next thing is, my sauce goes in, okay? Mm, you hear the seasoning sound. Yeah. Okay, keep this moving about. At this point, you can lower the heat. Chef, oh. so I think your stove's heat is can go quite high. <laughs> uh, it can, it can, but you don't want to go that too high, la, quite too high. 
Really okay. In a flat. <laughs> and the final thing to do here is your brown sugar, your white pepper, mm -hmm. and my cornstarch. Yes. We are go chin. Yes. So the sauce is the vegetable is well coated with all the sauces. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a little bit thick, right? You can sometimes add a little bit of water also, just to rinse out the remaining cornstarch. Okay, and then what you see is it will coat everything nicely in a nice thick brown sauce. Okay. Off the heat, I'm just going to let this sit because I have one more step. My vegetables are not quite done yet, right? What's next? You guys know we had our kailan leaf, yes. okay? So as my vegetables are here, I don't want them to overcook, right? So I need to do this fast. Kailan leaf, I have two batches of this. I'm going to put this in. Watch, okay? Watch. Let's see the heat on this. Uh, let's keep it quite low, mm -hmm. right? And... Wow! Okay, so that's gonna pop and sizzle a little bit. And now I'm just gonna make sure I stir that. All the bubbles. That's right. All that water turning to steam and coming out. Okay, can you see now that there's a lot less steam? It's yeah. not bubbling so much. It will start to crisp up very soon. Okay, we want it to be crispy. We want it to be crispy. At this point, okay, time to get some uh, paper towels. Give me a second. Huh? Yeah. So we're preparing the crispy kailan with oyster sauce and garlic. Yes. This is the last step, preparing the crispy kailan garnish, the topping, which is very... That's right. Okay, just taking a look at my kailan right now. No, not quite done yet. So we're adding to the oil, which earlier uh, Chef Lin used it to fry the shallots. Which is That's good. right, shallot oil, and then now this is the kailan in the oil also. So you can see the kailan right now is still losing bubbles and still being uh, sort of fizzy and annoying, right? So let it sit first, and uh, very soon it will be crispy and time to take out, okay? Ah, I can't wait to eat this, man. I've got my vegetables, I've got my garnish, I've got my rice. Yes. Yeah. Steamed and looking so <laughs> look at that. Yes. Smells good. Uh Chef can we use baby Thailand? Sorry? Can we use baby Kailan in this? Yes, I, I actually am using baby Kailan mm -hmm. in my in my Kailan dish. I'm using baby Kailan for the stir fried version and then I'm using the the older Kailan leaves for the crispy version. Nice. Oh, wow, it looks dark green. Yes, so this is the key thing you want. You want this color and you want this flavor. Right now, it tastes a little bit like seaweed. It's got this kelp and kale thing going. It's a little bit bitter because from the brassica family, this is very, very tasty. I guarantee you guys, okay? Final batch in. And this is the last thing we're going to be cooking today. Woohoo! Off you go. Come back. More bubbles. More bubbles. Not everyone's getting really hungry. <laughs> I hope you're getting hungry. So that's the whole idea of cook along, right? Is we cook, we start before dinner time, and by the time you know we're done, and we can enjoy this meal together. So we have another cook along tomorrow at five thirty uh, with Jamie, uh, Master Chef Singapore Season One, first runner up, and we'll be cooking two dishes with rice. So please don't miss that. Be on time and. You won't go so hungry tomorrow. <laughs> yes, please uh, participate as much as you can, guys. If you want to ask questions, if you want to turn on your webcams at this point, we're close to the end of this session already. I'm just going to finish up these dishes and plate them up. Question on the vegetable dish. Can we use 
what is T1 chai? Is it a type of vegetable? I personally uh, uh, Yes, you can. In fact, you can use any sort of greens that you want, to be very, very honest. It's just that I prefer kailan because I like kailan myself the most. <laughs> so, all sorts of vegetables, all sorts of leafy greens work. Lah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. Just experiment go at home with different ingredients that you like. And what you have mm-hmm. on hand, sometimes you just don't have. Then don't need right. to, to buy. Just use what you have. Uh, uh, that being said, the crispy part, uh, I will still stick to kailan. Lah. Okay. I don't think some of the other vegetables can be fried up crispy like that. Uh, Nai pai and all that won't make for very crispy uh, leaves. Uh, but for the stir fry portion, yeah, go ahead and use uh, all sorts of vegetables for that. Okay, let me just make sure my final round of crispy kailan leaf is ready. Okay, there we go. You can see it getting dark brown, uh, dark green, sorry. Dark green. <laughs> dark brown. It's all the time it's low low heat, right? Because we don't want it to, to get... Uh, I mean, well, this is at medium heat. La. It's deep frying, so you don't want it to, to burn, definitely. But uh, too low also, you won't cook your stuff properly. All right. So just taking a look at this lovely emerald green bunch of crispy oh. kailan, okay? Never thought, I mean, I, I just imagine eating it for the first time, right? You'll be like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think it's time for us to plate up some items now. Let me just get some plates out for you. Actually, I think we have a question. Does it work if we use air fryer for the crispy kailan? Air fryer for the crispy kailan? Uh? That's a good question. Uh, I personally have not tried. Um, I would be very interested to know, but I think it would be challenging in an air fryer because uh, you have to find some way after you cut, right? So you keep tossing them a little bit. I know you can dry kailan leaves, and you can dry kale very nicely, um, but I'm not sure if you can get this kind of crispy effect inside a, a air fryer. If you can, please try it. Let me know. Contact us somehow. Uh, let us see your, your handiwork. I'll be very interested to figure that out. Yeah, so Karen, please try it and then you can upload in your app your must your your result and let us know if air fryer works for crispy kailan. That's right, that's right. Okay, so just looking at my law my fun. Let's steal a bite. Mm. Oh. How good, chef? <laughs> Caught. Oh, hot. <laughs> But so good. And this is really the sort of comfort food that I like. Uh, I'm just going to get some of this out for you. Then I'm gonna plate this up, okay? Okay. So this is not a complicated dish. You can see now there are some bits on the side that are a bit brown and crunchy, which is exactly how I like it. Very good, very good. So it can get a bit, yeah, like crunchy because then almost, you know, a bit like the like clay pot. Uh, the fan jiao, la, right? The fan jiu, yeah. which is the the prized part of clay pot rice. Uh, I think people like that quite a lot. Hey, I'm just going to place this on the side there like that. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna plate everything on one plate. Okay, this is a this is a one portion plate. Yes. I'm gonna show everyone what to do. You remember those sausages that we steamed on the top? Yes. Okay, so that's gonna go on the side. Real quick. This green rice, I think sometimes it's usually paired white and pale. This Sorry. Glutinous rice usually is like quite often we see white and pale. This one's a like, Ducks, the duck sauce, oyster sauce version. Uh, yes, because there is the, the, um, the addition of uh, dark soy sauce, mm-hmm. and uh, this is a, a slight, slightly different version of uh, glutinous rice. Um, this has the clay pot kind of feel to it. Clay pot rice tends to have that uh, dark soy flavor inside. Okay, so. Can't resist stealing a bite or two of this. 
Next part of the dish, I'm just going to plate up very quickly. Let's get some of my... My Kailan up. So that's the baby Kailan. So this is the baby Kailan. Garlic. Yeah, you see how it's thickly coated with sauce. This is exactly how I like it. And it's not too limp and cooked though. So what you did was you hit it with like a high heat mm. and then let it go, right? Okay, my crispy garlic. But before that, I want to put some of my... Oh, ho, ho. wow. That's the crispy Thailand, the fried. Yeah, Lovely. the ultimate indulgence. Just very fun at home to have these crispy bits going. Wow, we have Catherine who just say hello from Canada. Canada. <laughs> nice to meet you from Canada. Which part of Canada are you in? This is uh, Quebec. Uh, you in uh, Vancouver. Where are you? Where are you, Catherine? Ontario. Ontario. Wow. Okay. It must be getting quite cold there. Yeah. Yes. Thank I you for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, Canada in the Chinese communities has some of the best Chinese food and Cantonese food outside of Hong Kong. Ooh. Okay. Please excuse my portion size. I'm just very excited and happy to try this very soon. Okay. I'm going to put some of my garlic chives. At the side. Yes, the pick pickle. Yeah, this is just a hearty dish. Now, if you have a blowtorch at home or you have a, a bit more time, you can stir fry this into a pan and brown it a little bit if you wish. But at this point, uh, this is just a very simple bit on the side. Uh, pickles always help to lift your dish and add a little bit more crunch and flavor. Uh, and I can't think of a more homely sort of... Uh, heartwarming dish than sapo fun with your carefully fried shallots yes. with your kailan leaf yep. as well as uh, some very very nice um yeah. liver sausage see i'm losing my focus now because all i want to do is try this dish and then i have to pretend uh and look nice and professional without stuffing my face so this is the part where i stick my spoon in and i tell you guys that this is really awesome some Yay, wow. You see? Look at that. The mushroom. It's picked up all that flavor. It's absorbed everything inside. Are you happy? <laughs> More. Another bite. <laughs> some of that crispy kailan. Yes. Crispy garlic. Ah, so fun. Yeah. Guys, this was a very personal two dishes. Um, these are some of my favorite items on the whole world to eat. Wow. My favorite sausage uh, dishes from my childhood, as well as a crispy kailan, a flavor that I really, really enjoy. And very easy to make, actually. So in the span of uh, just over an hour, you guys were able to put together these two dishes uh, and no special equipment, just a stove, a good frying pan, and a very simple rice cooker. Hope you guys enjoyed this session. Singyan, do you have any questions for me at this point? Well, I just think this, I have no questions. Um, for me, I'm just uh, really amazed by the different textures that's from the glutinous rice, right? Uh, the stickiness, the sausage, and then all the way how you lay it up with crispy kailan. So... Um, really, thank you so much, Chef Ming. Uh, it's such a pleasure to learn from you, cook with you. Uh, well, I will be definitely cooking uh, next time. <laughs> um, so I just want to give uh, our Thank view. you very much, Singyan. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we have a question about how where to buy the good wax products. Do you mean like the la chang? Sorry, say again, say again. We want to know where we can buy the good, like the la chang. The Chinese sausage. Ah, okay. So you will find Chinese sausage all around in supermarkets, but they are different qualities. Uh, sometimes you will find them from Chinese stores as well. Mm. Um, try your luck at Chinatown. Wander around. See whether there are some shops there that have 
uh, some of the higher quality stuff. You yeah. can even go to places that also sell your um, your preserved meats. La. You have your your Bichenhyang and stuff like that. They also sometimes carry this sort of thing, especially if they have uh, contacts for that. Yeah. Ask around, look around. And it, it, it really took me a while for me to figure out which was my favorite uh, type of sausage. And uh, yeah, hope you find your favorite type of sausage too. Yay! Any last questions? We have a lot of people saying thank you. It was a brilliant, uh, like a lot of brilliant tips, great experience. So yeah, if, um, I just want to quickly share before you all go that you can share your cooking, right? Uh, if you're too shy to share now, you can actually share it in your right app. Okay, we have a challenge um, that is uh, uh, for you uh, and also uh, actually in collaboration with uh, Lee Kang Kee. So in, on, this, on this page, right, in challenge page, you will see that there's Asian cooking with Lee Kang Kee. So um, you can click on it and you will see that, yeah, there are a lot of, wow, people are, uh, are uploading the challenges. So you can share, uh, upload here and win uh, fair price vouchers as well as Lee Kang Kee sources. So use Asian cooking with LKK, upload here, and uh, yeah, uh, you can share what you cooked and more people can get inspired uh, from your cooking as well. Great. So Singy, I just want to mention that this is just my version of doing this and that recipe there, feel free to tweak it based on what you prefer. Don't forget that a lot of these recipes, especially when you cook them at home, they're meant and designed to change with additions and subtractions. You can put more ingredients in, take them out based on what people like. Right. So cook your version of this recipe, um, take pictures, upload it up onto the your Ripe uh, app uh, and show us what you've been doing, uh, especially if you're uh, interested in some of these ingredients here and an enthusiastic home cook. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Chef Mintan. This is really a great highlight for our day one. Great wrap up. Uh, be able to cook with you. It's a pleasure. And uh, wish you a very good evening. Uh, hope to cook with you very soon. Thank you. I'm going to enjoy all of this crispy kailan and my wonderful uh, Chinese sausage also. Thank Me. you very much, guys. Thank you for cooking along with us. And we'll see you soon, okay? Thank you. See you soon, Chef Min. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.